I love Joe Biden. He's so encouraging to me. He's such an inspiration. Yeah, Joe, uh, there's nothing quite so obnoxious as watching Joe Biden get wrong literally every single thing he can possibly get wrong. It's kind of like watching a dude that just kind of walks through a yard that's got a bunch of rakes out there and he just steps on every single rake and it just keeps taking it to the face. But let's be honest, uh, you just like the video with the guy with the rakes, you're going to watch it because it's kind of entertaining to watch a dude just beat the shit out of himself. Uh, Joe Biden does this to me every time I watch him talk. And he made some remarks the other day about the future of electric vehicle manufacturing in the United States. And as per our usual arrangement with the commander in chief, he whiffed it, screwed the pooch, uh, he effed it up. Uh, I meant it when I said the future was going to be made right here in America. Companies like GM and Ford are building more electric vehicles here at home than ever before is what Sleepy Joe said, ignoring, of course, the most well-recognized name in electric vehicle production in the world ever. He didn't, he didn't mention Tesla. Uh, Elon Musk, famous billionaire and Asperger's answer to Tony Stark, was none too pleased, and he tweeted out, starts with a T, ends with an A, ESL in the middle. Now, you might think to yourself, why in the world would the Biden administration not want to welcome Tesla in general and Musk himself into their fold of allies? Because that's clearly, clearly the message that's being conveyed. And I don't necessarily mean the message by Biden. I'm not entirely sure the man knows who Elon Musk is because a lot of the time he doesn't know who he himself is. But this smacks of administrative string pulling. Uh, but the answer is at least twofold. <clears throat> For one thing, Musk has slammed the president's Build Back Better plan and the legislation surrounding it multiple times because, you know, he has a brain and can look at the figures and do the math on the back of his napkin. It's also the case, and, and Musk has pointed this out, that Biden is kind of a tool in the United Auto Workers Union. Now, at one point recently, the White House even had an event for electric vehicle manufacturers and Tesla's invite somehow got lost in the mail. Funny how that happens. Uh, so what's all this mean to me and to you? Okay, well, it's entertaining to watch a socially awkward billionaire join in the tomato-throwing line, I, I reckon. Uh, we like nothing better than hearing people who rank among the world's elite coming to the same realization about President Biden that we do. But satisfaction aside, it's important that we recognize the real issue here, and that is that Elon Musk doesn't always like to play ball with the leftist agenda. Now, I'm not saying he's a conservative. Lord knows he's not. But in some ways, <coughs> that fact... Uh, that he's not, is actually more telling because it means that it's not good enough for the left if you sometimes bend their direction on some issues. It's got to be 100% of the time. You look at this stuff that's going on with Joe Rogan, and you can see the latest example of how the left treats people who largely agree with him, but once in a while step out of bounds. Now, Musk steps out of bounds whenever he feels like it, criticizes the president whenever he feels like it, so don't be too surprised when someone comes out with a tape of him saying the N-word or something like that, uh, whatever's going to knock his public estimation out of whack. Now, Elon Musk company may usher us into a new era of electric vehicles that actually work worth a damn. Jerry's still out on that. But if he doesn't quit tweeting against the left, Left, he's going to suffer for it. Now, personally, I hope I'm wrong. I'd love nothing more than for more billionaires, not fewer, to stand up and tell Joe Biden what they really think. So we're going to see what happens. Stay tuned to that.